As the world's population grows to a predicted 9 billion by 2050, the demand for food production will double as emerging economies consume more meat and dairy and grow or import more grain. Today, it's 7 billion, and tomorrow, just 24 hours from now, the net world population will have gone up by 200,000 people. China is the largest grain producer, whilst being the largest consumer, and imports around 40 million tonne of grain each year to meet demand. Only five countries export the majority of the world's grain, Brazil, Argentina, Canada, Australia, and the largest, the US. The United States uh, has had a big boost in the last 15 years with the introduction of a so-called glyphosate-resistant transgenic GM crop. The massive adoption of crops that are glyphosate resistant, namely soybean, cotton, corn and canola, has made glyphosate the herbicide of choice for in-crop weed control. But what has happened is the Roundup Ready crops are just so good that in the US there's an over-reliance on them, which means an overuse of the precious herbicide glyphosate, which is often called Roundup, most people know it as Roundup. Historically, agricultural production in Australia is quite different, but the risk of overusing glyphosate is similar. Australia is only 22 million people, but exports 20 million tonnes of grain annually, which feeds at least 100 million people. What happens on each Australian farm is important for world food production. Nearly all Australian farmers predominantly use glyphosate for knockdown weed control prior to crop emergence. And with the recent introduction of Roundup Ready canola and cotton, it is also applied through the cropping phase. Because of the high reliance and long-term usage of glyphosate in Australia, resistance has emerged in several weed species, most prominently in ryegrass. 30 or 40 years ago, when the profitability of the sheep industry and wool started to decline, the importance of cropping greatly increased, and this marvellous pasture plant became Australia's number one weed. Ryegrass is a plant with a lot of genetic variability, present at huge numbers across the country from coast to coast, where it was then uh, uh, hit with herbicides uh, because we adopted uh, much more cropping. And so we used the same herbicides and ryegrass, huge numbers, a lot of genetic diversity, cross-pollinated, easily developed herbicide resistance and that's why we have the problem that we do today. With the decline in the sheep industry, the cropping industry expanded and the new no-tillage farming practices being adopted greatly contributed to increased crop vigour and greater crop yields. No-till is fantastic. It's definitely the biggest contributor to our crop productivity that's occurred in the past 20 years. But like all changes, it has some other effects. One is we've replaced the plough with a chemical for weed control. So we've increased our reliance on herbicides for weed control. By increasing our reliance on herbicides, we've increased our risk of herbicide-resistant weeds. So while we've adopted no-till, and we must continue to do so, we've got to be more sustainable about our weed control and our herbicide use. Farming systems are different across the world. However, to control the spread of herbicide-resistant weeds, it is critical to manage the weed seed bank. If the farmer can manage the weed seed set at harvest, the benefits are seen the following year in lower numbers of crop weeds. Low weed seed banks also provide options, encouraging good yields, whilst also maintaining the cropping phase. The weed seed bank is the seeds of all the weeds that are in the soil, in the top 5-10 centimetres. We need to get those numbers low. Really good farmers have low weed seed banks. Too many farmers have high seed banks. If you get the weed numbers low, and there are many ways to do it. Farmers with sheep and pasture and livestock can run the seed banks down. Continuous croppers can use hay phases, uh, silage crops, whatever makes sense for an individual enterprise. Get the weed seed banks low, keep them low. Preventing weed seeds surviving in the seed bank, rotating crops, 
Utilizing the double knot technique and rotating and using herbicides at full label rates will encourage the preservation of herbicides, most particularly glyphosate, the world's most important herbicide. I always say, with herbicides, when on a good thing, don't stick to it. If you're getting great weed control with glyphosate, change it. If you're getting wonderful weed control with another herbicide, any herbicide, change it, diversify it, use everything that makes economic sense to keep diversity in the farming system. Glyphosate sales are worth around five billion US dollars globally. It remains one of the most widely used herbicides in cereal production, with global glyphosate sales at least nine times higher than any other herbicide in 2009. Glyphosate is a, as important for world food production as penicillin is for human health. It is a one in a hundred year chemical. It is a precious resource that we should conserve for future farmers, future harvests. It is simply almost irreplaceable.